I'm going to quickly go through the function of the touch screen on the 979-2. Uh, this screen here is the main screen. It's the screen you're going to be operating from primarily. Uh, when you turn on the machine, this is what it comes to. Um, top bar here is, is the status of the machine. It'll always say what the machine is doing, if it's waiting for something, if it's in the process of doing something, it'll say it up at the top here. Um, the bulk of the screen are the presets for the links. And these are operator settable presets. Um, for, for each mode, they have a, their own bank of presets. So I have 4545, and we have all of our buttons here for those, those lengths. If I wanted to make a new preset, I can click on the one I want to, uh, to, to do, preset there, modify preset. Now I can type either in as a decimal or as a fraction. So say fraction, I want to do uh, 58 and uh, 15. 16. Now, if I'm happy with that, see, it'll show me up there what that decimal is. I hit save. So then when I go back over here, my new number's in there. Um, the, um, the, here's our different positions for the machine. We have, you know, all the different angles that are possible. Um, here we have our feed modes, normal feed, wide jam mode, in miter stop mode, it changes the feed operation of the machine. Um, right now, we've just turned it on, and so right now it's saying waiting to home. And there's our home button. So when I hit that, it'll start the home sequence. So again, homing, gives the status up there. As soon as the machine is homed, it's ready to operate. Um, I'll let it finish homing here. All right, waiting for download. So in order to get it to do something, I need to tell it what angle and where I want it to be. So just for our demo here, I'm going to go to my number here. So I have that highlighted. Cut length here is selected. Um, you can also enter numbers directly. So I can do that and put in, you know, 51 or whatever. So I, I can enter them directly there, so you don't have to have it on a preset. Uh, quantity, if quantity is zero, it's in continuous run mode, where it'll just run until the your stack of wood is gone. Um, but if you put a quantity there, it'll just run that, that number. Uh, the next step is to turn on the saws. Um, it's this button right here. Um, it makes you hold it down for three seconds before the saws come on. And if you let it go of any point before that three seconds, the saws turn back off, just as a safety thing. Um, so what I'll do is I'll download it. It'll move to position, and then I'll turn on the saws. Adjusting, moving to position, and now saws on, so now I'm ready to run a cycle. And I think later in, later in the video we'll go through actually running. Um, over on the side here are different kind of manual operations. Um, again, generally you're not going to go to these screens, it's only if there's some, something special needs to be done. Uh, I go to manual. This lets me jog the, the servo carriage back and forth. You know, pretty self-explanatory. This closes it. That opens it. Um, setup is where we do calibration. Um, calibration, if you tell it to cut a 58-inch long board and it cuts a 58-and-a-half-inch long board, this is where you you'd make the adjustments to get the length correct. This one here adjusts all angles. It moves everything. So if I add a half an inch here, it'll add a half an inch to all four um, kind of angle modes. And then each, each angle mode has its own calibration as well. So if I need to just adjust 45-45, I make adjustments here. And then there's also an adjustment for the miter stop only. That'll just adjust the miter stop. Uh, The way the calibration works is if I want to say I want to add a half an inch, um, I, I go to um, system-wide config, I go add to offset, you put what my number I want to do in there, and now it's, it should, it's, a, it's made an adjustment for what I've set. 
Uh, and the same is true for all of these. If I type the wrong thing, say I come in here and I type, you know, you know, nine and, and whoops here, let me not do it now. Let's um, do it in one I'm not doing. It. So I go over here and I say I type in nine. Oh, I didn't want to hit nine. I can either go in here and put negative nine to undo it, uh, or I can hit clear offset and that just wipes it out. Um, then once I'm happy with my numbers, it's just kind of a, um, to, to make it easier for the operator when he's trying to adjust something, my, whatever adjustments I made are always shown in this middle thing. If I'm happy with it and I kind of want to make that permanent, if I say combine with offset, it will zero that back out and now, you know, if six months from now when I make an adjustment, I, I can see what adjustments I've been making. You don't have to combine it, but it's just so that it's easier to come back and, you know, and look what you've, what's happened to it later. Um, we already looked at the modify presets. It's uh, whatever one has been selected. When you go to modify, and you know it's selected by that highlight there. Whenever you go to modify presets and, and hit save, that will that's the place it'll be writing the information to. Um, the other thing about this is there actually is a key switch to enable saving. With this key switch off, it won't. You can't make any changes to that main screen. So if the if the manager wants to put them in there and not have people modify them, you can just turn that off and take the key, and they won't be able to change what the presets are. The operator will still be able to cut whatever they want because they can always manually put in a number there. Um, and the last screen is our diagnostic screen, which again, that's going to be you're probably going to be talking to us if you're looking at this screen. Uh, but anytime anything happens in there, like you see right here, it tells me that I made a new preset. And it gives me the date and time of when that happens. Um, and if things get you know, extending, retracting, calibration adjustments, all that stuff gets recorded on here so that if there is a problem, we can go back and maybe see the sequence of events that, that led to the problem. Um, one other thing, uh, whenever you've downloaded something, it will show down here what's actually in memory and being downloaded. Because I can be up here messing around with stuff, like switching stuff, switching angles. Um, but until I hit download, those have not taken effect. Down here it shows what's actually in effect and what's will be running if I hit start. It'll also give a quantity done. So if I'm you know, in the middle of running, down there it will show how many cycles have been run. I think that's it.